Have you ever heard of animal communication? It's a method of using intuition and energy healing to con connect with your pets. And there are certain mentors and experts that are great at this. And today I get to interview one of them. So let me read you her bio and then I'll bring her on. Rachel Embry is an intuitive spiritual mentor, intuitive animal communicator, energy healer, and astrologer. She offers a unique down-to-earth approach to, con to connecting with animals, spirituality, and energy healing. Her business is called Radiant Vibes, and it offers, they, it, the business offers you an opportunity to bring optimal connection and deep bonding for, for, your, for your animals, and for you as well. She works with human beings. She really started working with, with um, animals of different kinds, and then the, the owners of the animals wanted to work with her directly too. Um, Rachel believes that when both people and animals achieve alignment from within, they can radiate outward to all with confidence, unconditional love, and vibrancy. Welcome, Rachel, to this uh, interview. Hi, George. Thanks for having me. It's good to be yeah. here. Yeah. So I, I'd love for you to start with just describing what you think animal communication is. For those, uh, th there are lots of us who have heard of it. But that's about it. We've heard of it. <laughs> yeah. So, what is, what is it from your point of view? And I know you don't just communicate with the animals, but you also provide some some healing elements. So, yeah. 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 For sure. Um, so, to me, it's a little different than what you might typically hear or read online or on the internet. Um, but what I've learned is that all of my life, I've had this innate ability to really connect with animals and be able to um, get them to do things that they're, they wouldn't normally do <laughs> or where there was resistance or if they're being difficult or challenging about things, then I've been able to somehow hone that in and, and it's easy for them. And then I realized over time that this was not just something that everybody could do. It was actually a unique gift that I possess. So um, and after working with my own animal communicator for many years, she helped me um, really hone this gift in and be able to finally tune it, you know, so that I could put it in a way that was tangible that I understood. Um, so in that, I've found that for me, it's not so much like dialogue. It's not this back and forth. Sometimes it is. Sometimes I can hear words very easily um, from the animals. Mostly those are animals that don't have as many issues, traumas, um, stresses. But um, it's really a way that I connect with them and I can empathically and intuitively sense what they're feeling, what they're thinking, um, and Kind of know where the blocks are. Um, they're often very misunderstood. We as people think we're doing the right things or that we're asking the, the right ways of what our animals need, but they're much more instinctual. And so we complicate it. <laughs> and uh, in the animal mind, it's actually really simple. So um, sometimes it can come over in the form of images um, and when animals have experienced a lot of traumas um, or when they're in high states of stress, that is to me the most effective way because I can use the images and they understand that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And okay. I, I, I found, Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, I would actually love for you to share what kinds of animals you've been working with. Uh, something that probably the audience doesn't know about you is that you, you, um, you, some of your clients, some of your, your animal clients are, you know, um, successful i don't know how you call it a uh, dog uh <laughs> help me out here they they, sure, they, they dog, compete in dog shows right yeah, yeah. and they, they they compete in dog like national dog shows they're very successful and um so when i i wanted to bring that in because uh sometimes people think well animal communicators how do you know it's really working and how do you know yeah. it's, right but it's like yeah. wow okay even national dog show champions are coming to you and they keep coming back to you because mm -hmm. somehow what you do is helping them compete better <laughs> and that's yeah. I think that's fascinating yeah. but talk about that like how did you yeah I mean anything you want to say about that sure um, well my I, I myself uh, compete in agility and obedience and I've uh, finished several champions in the dog showing world so 
I do have a good understanding of that. I've also ridden horses competitively and I've been around horses all my life. So um, I work with all different animals. Um, there's no limit. I've worked with birds, I've lizards, chickens, turkeys, you know, you name it. They've come to me and um, it's all the same. You know, it's, there's no difference in the way that they communicate. But um, what you're speaking of is there's, I work with a lot of animals that compete regularly with their people and or they're out on the road um, be in dog shows and some of those are the ones that are televised on TV <laughs> which is kind of interesting and neat for me um, because I see them on the television but it's it can be a, a stressful road sometimes for both the human and the animal um, understanding what each other needs and it can be a lot of pressure on the animal when it's not understood by them what is expected of them and that this is a job and it's a partnership and we're trying to come together and form a team so that's really what I do with that and a lot of these people and their animals work with me anywhere from like weekly to once a month um, and I do a lot of energy clearing uh, on these animals because they need their their meridians their chakras everything to be really balanced and what happens is when the stress gets high, it gets stuck in the body and it can come out in stress, overwhelm, uh, physical issues. So whatever comes up, they contact me and I work with it directly. Yeah. Wow. And so for those of us who don't have, you know, competitive animals, and by the way, maybe a few people watching this do have some, uh, some, you know, that situation and, and that they, they love to hear this, but just for those of us with everyday pets, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do we, yeah, what, what would we work with you on? Sure. Um, I honestly love working with all animals. <laughs> it doesn't end people of the like. Um, but I have a lot of people that come to me when their animals aren't feeling well. Um, I worked with a lot of dogs that are undergoing chemotherapy because cancer is basically, you know, it's on the rise, not just with people, but animals too. Um, so I have a large number, unfortunately, of animals that are undergoing chemotherapy or their prognosis is really poor. They've given maybe a couple months and um, week with them on energy clearing. And um, I will work to basically alleviate or eliminate whichever, whatever physical symptoms that they're experiencing at that time. And through that process, I've actually been able to get animals to go well beyond their prognosis, you know, timeline. Um, also really help alleviate the effects of chemotherapy on the body so that the body can actually receive it in an, a proper immune response way. And um, the other, I mean, there's just so much, like that's one thing with the health, but there's also a lot of animals that are experiencing anxiety. Um, I get that all the time. My dog is biting now, my dog is this, or my horse is, is, is acting weird every time I get on, on him, you know, when it, so there's, those things are true, like signs to me that there's anxiety and a disconnect happening. And um, so I connect with the animal to figure out, okay, well, why are you biting? Or why are you constantly itching? Or why are you going at the other dog in the house? Or, you know, why are you throwing me off your back every time I get on there? <laughs> and uh, relay the messages to the person so that they understand why. And then what is unique for me is that I always, always use energy clearing because it clears the pathway so that... Um, the animal can then receive messages in a way that it understands. And also the person can un understand where the animal's coming from. And then I can provide tips and techniques from my back, like my knowledge of how to work with each of these different facets of, of, you know, that the animals display, like the negative patterns basically that are being displayed and give the, uh, the person, you know, techniques to work with that. Um, so, yeah. So I find initially when there's, really traumatic situations or aggress aggression um, or any type of health stressor situation um, that it's best to do the work weekly uh, for at least a month. And then after that, we can reassess, you know, um, but usually there's a lot of release hap that happens within that first two sessions. And then we can typically go to twice a month. And then ultimately the goal is just to do a check-in, you know, every other month. So, you know, Mm, that's great. And um, just to be clear with people, you don't have to be there in person to work with the yeah. animal. Yeah. 
Yes, that's a good point. Um, I am, in fact, never present with an animal when I work with them. Um, I find that, and or and people. I might be on the phone with people, and um, I might be like in that way, but I'm never connected physically with them in their physical presence because I found that there's too much happening in that exchange. It's really um, hard for me. My work is done primarily from connecting from the higher self, from the spirit or the soul of the animal or the person that I'm working with. Um, so that's where I can see like, okay, who this animal really is outside of the stress that it's displaying and experiencing or the health issues or whatever's happening. And so if I'm in present presently with them, it muddies, like kind of like makes everything muddy, you know? Um, so this way I can keep those energetic boundaries clear and keep the connection with the higher self. So, so uh, talk to us a bit about what you, what you mean by that higher self. And, and I know you also talk about universal life energies and even mm -hmm. spirit guides. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What is your understanding of, 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 of these things and, and how it works with animals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we each have, all of us, any living being here has a higher self aspect of us. I, I mean, you can hear it called the spirit. Um, a lot of the times I feel like it's a little separate from the soul because uh, the soul is sort of never, it, it, it's always out there in the, the astral plane, sort of, for lack of better words. But, um, and then the higher self is just like the self that we are really born here to evolve into um, when we come into this earth. So, you know, of course there's different things that we are born into, environmental stressors, there's um, environments, parents, you know, how we're raised and same with animals, what um, environments they were put into, whether it's like a puppy mill situation or, you know, uh, sometimes breeders have puppies till they're five months and they've never even seen the light of the day outside, you know, so all of these things can affect you know, who we are in our physical self, you know, but um, that's where the connecting with the higher self, which is really, and that, that's sort of like what's really unique is that I can see that. I can see that version of every person or every animal that I'm with. So it's like, okay, here's where I can see that you want to be spiritually and in this physical body on this earth. So, and then bring in alignment to that. That's great. And so mm -hmm. you work with people as well. Um, mm -hmm. so talk about that. I, I mean, a lot of times people start with working with their animals and then they realize, wow, it's helping. How can yeah. it help me as well? Um, yeah. what kinds of issues have you been working with people on? Yeah. Well, I mean, or human people. <laughs> yeah. It's just like with the animals, it's just whatever comes up, you know? Um, I had a lot of resistance to working with people because I felt um, and I really get animals, you know, I've just lived and breathed <laughs> the connection with animals all my life. Um, but I honestly uh, started, when I learned energy clearing back in my 20s, I started working with people in person. Um, so very like three, like 1D, you know, in person. Um, so that's really how I learned. And I've always been good with people, but I wasn't sure how to incorporate this knowledge into something that felt really good for me. Um, and I started out trying to be like a, the traditional coach thing and doing all that, but it just wasn't working for me. So I found that the best way for me and, and the people that were coming to me was to combine the intuition that I have into guidance and mentoring, connecting with spirit guides, because it's extremely important in my life and it's helped me so much, you know, and so bringing a, a connection to their guides and then also working with my guides and it make, and then even bringing other things like intuitive astrology and the energy clearing all together. Um, so it's kind of a mouthful, but it just flows and it works. And it seems to be really, um, I mean, anything from physical, deep physical pains, like headaches, um, sciatica, people that have chronic, I mean, they're having compression discs. You can't, I can't like obviously get rid of that compression but the pain that's stored in the body around that from the emotional holdings is where I can come into play. So I can help alleviate the pain, make it less, sometimes make it go away altogether, you know, which is really the goal. Um, there's also a lot of overwhelm that people experience. And, um, you know, we, there's a lot of gripping, a lot of trying to control our day-to-day -day lives. And often people 
we just don't realize that we're doing that. And so we're not in flow and alignment with the day because we're just gripping, grasping, trying to control to keep our fears and our ego in line, you know, and it makes us feel safe. But working to release um, holdings around those energies and uh, it seems to really help. <laughs> mm. And I'm sorry, my dogs are howling in the background. I hope you can't hear that. Oh, uh, can't, can't. Yeah, it's not coming through. Um, I hope they're okay. They're um, fine. I think yeah. the siren's going by. Oh, okay, okay. So um, when you work with people, uh, so you, you, you're working with their, their spiritual life, their, ener their emotional life, at a distance and that affects their physical yeah feelings, of course yeah. Yeah. um so hopefully that 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 connection i mean i think a lot of us understand and or at least believe in that connection mm -hmm. um one thing i want to bring in here is your astrology you mentioned intuitive astrology mm -hmm. um you've been studying astrology for for a while yeah, and about 10. 10 years, yeah. No, so, since I was 10. Oh, since you were 10. Okay. Yeah, since That's I was a just yeah. a little tyke. That's great. And, and so tell us about that journey. Um, yeah, your, your journey of learning astrology and then what, what, do you, what do you mean by intuitive astrology? Yeah, um, sure. Well, for me, um, astrology was just, it was innate. It's just something that I've, as soon as I saw it, you know, read my first book, I read it from cover to cover in probably a week at even that age. And it just stuck. It really stuck. And I feel that that was the gateway for me to really getting into all these other, you know, aspects of healing, crystal stone, I mean, chakras, um, meridians in the body, connecting with guides, spirit guides, power animals, all of that. So I feel like it was a really big gateway um, for that. But I love it um, in particular because it gives a lot of insight to how we process and deal with our emotions as individuals. It explains polarities in our energies that we're experiencing on a day to day in our inner dialogue that's happening. Um, it also can explain, you know, like maybe why people are really opinionated and how to work with that energy or why people, uh, one person might say, everybody takes me the wrong way. And it's like, looking at I can look at that and say, well, you have this dynamic and that dynamic, and then we can work with it together, you know, to figure out what's the best way of working with that energy. So I feel that astrology gives us a really good baseline for all of our best attributes that are here for our purpose to help us bring alignment to that, how to cope and handle our inner emotions, what we need to be emotionally fed as individuals, as well as learning to work with the sort of shadow side of ourselves that, you know, they're here, they're our teachers, not our enemies. So oh, that's great. Wonderful. And um, the astrology you work with is, is Western astrology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. I know there's different systems of astrology. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and so the intuitive, the, the intuitive part that you bring mm -hmm. to astrology, I think is really important because yes. it's not yeah. just about reading the charts or whatever, but mm -hmm. say a bit more about that. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I have a really strong baseline in astrology, but the intuitive part is somehow I can look at a chart and get a really good feeling of the map of a person, you know, mm -hmm. of their um, emotional, spiritual, their aspirations. And so what I do is I take all of that and I, I combine it with my intuition and the spiritual guidance that I hear around that and can relay more messages. So um, I'm not one that's going to, you know, when you're, when somebody's working with me specifically on astrology, I'm not one that's going to go down by a book and, 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 and give you very, you know, word for word of a software or program. You're going to get a lot of intuitive guidance around what it, all of these placements means for you, that person specifically, not as like, okay, well, you know, they have Mars and, and Aries and, and, and yes, there's ton, you know, millions of other people that have that, but what does it mean for this person, you know, as a, as a individual? Yeah, that's great. That's really, I think that's really special because otherwise, yeah, like you said, software programs exist or websites yeah. exist that we could just read, read it. And then oftentimes yeah. it doesn't connect with us or sometimes, you know, it we don't get it. And so, um, so when you, so 
are you moving more into working with people or are you kind of splitting your time between working with animals and people? Yeah, um, I am. I love working with people. Uh, I love working with animals. They, they both have, you know, to me, really rewarding aspects in each. I try really hard to split my time between both because I feel that, you know, as a whole, you know, I'm being called to really um, work with all beings, you know, <laughs> all animals and people to bring more interconnectivity um, and to help people really understand how misunderstood animals are, but to also help people understand how misunderstood they are, how they're misunderstanding themselves. And, um, you know, just to bring more of a connection, you know, in that sense. So mm, that's yeah. great. So if people wanted to connect with you and work with you, what do you recommend? What's the next step? Well, I have my website, which I think you have posted here. I'm also yeah. on Facebook and mm -hmm. Instagram. Um, but, you know, really, I just, I always tell people, I offer complimentary Q&As for anybody that wants more information. Um, I love connecting with people, answering their questions. Um, and even if it goes nowhere, just the simple fact that of maybe putting that light bulb that there is another way of healing out there, um, another way of connecting with animals. And even if it's not me, it's got that light bulb going and they might find somebody else that they feel works with them. But um, I always tell people have a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, see where it goes. Um, my energy clearings with people are done all email report um, because I'm in a deep state of med meditation in that. They're quite lengthy and long. <laughs> um, and uh, so that's one way. And then I do one-on-one -on -one with the spiritual mentoring. Um, but before anybody commits to working with me in a lengthy amount of time, uh, I always say, do that initial session, see if it works, you know, same with the animals and see if the animal's responding. If they're responding, then keep going. Mm. Wonderful. So yeah, be sure to those watching, if you're interested, the links are in the notes of the video, the website, the uh, Facebook page, Instagram, etc. And uh, Rochelle, thank you so much for doing your work. Any, yeah. any other words of encouragement or advice as we, oh, as we uh, finish the call? Yeah, I don't know. I just say, you know, if you're feeling compelled to make a change within yourself or, you know, if you're, you're sensing that something's just not quite right with your animal, um, get in touch with somebody that can help you because no, nobody's at a loss. And that we're at a time right now that there are so many healers and, and energy workers and light workers out there that are ready and want to help, you know, so just it doesn't mean any type of failure or that you're not good enough there's nothing wrong with look having somebody else walk that walk with you you know yeah excellent well so. thank you rachel and um yeah hope folks will reach out to you if they feel connected to this and um thanks for your work yeah thank you george yeah